ICH Q6 guideline it is the quality guideline from ICH and in this video we are going to learn regarding the ICH Q6 guideline what is the purpose what is the importance of this Q6 guideline and what is the main requirement for meeting the Q6 guideline requirements so ICH Q6A guideline is there which provides you complete list of the tests for new drug substances and the products and these are mainly the chemical substances as drugs and the drug products containing these chemically synthesized drugs mainly so this guideline provides you the quality requirements testing parameters and the requirements to meet q6 guideline requirements q6 guideline deals with the specifications test procedures and acceptance criteria for the new drug substances and new drug products many of the professionals require thorough understanding of this q6 guideline because they every day deal with the test procedures they deal with the specifications and they deal with the testing they deal with acceptance criteria so how to decide the tests what are universal tests and which are product specific tests so these information this idea and q6 guideline parameters q6 guideline understanding will help you to get the thorough knowledge to get complete understanding please be with me till the end of this video see as ich quality guideline provides you the quality requirements or quality parameters which are required to be fulfilled so q6 is the guideline which mainly provide you the understanding and requirements about specifications tests and the acceptance criteria so let's start with this video as the drug substances and the drug products are required to meet certain quality parameters so this guideline is there to help you to understand the requirements purpose of i6 guideline is to establish the specifications for the new drug substances that is apis and the products and the objective is to ensure the quality and the consistency then specifications so specifications generally we can say that these are the acceptance criteria or these are the limits which are required to be matched or which are required to meet specifications outlines the importance of setting appropriate specifications that are scientifically justified and relevant to the intended use of the drug for example i will give you the specification for assay so label claim is 100% whatever the strength is there for the product or dose of the product but the specification of assay will be 90% to 110% or it might be 95% to 105% so this is the specification specification is nothing but the limit or range which are which is required to be matched test procedures the guideline ICHQ6 emphasizes the need for validated test procedures to ensure that specifications can be reliably met acceptance criteria acceptance criteria it discusses the establishment of acceptance criteria based on the intended use of the drug including the uh, considerations for safety efficacy and the quality stability testing ichq6 also provides you information regarding the importance of stability testing 
in the context of specifications ensuring that products remain their quality retain their quality over the time period now we will see the regulatory consideration as per ichq6 the guideline provides a framework for regulatory authorities and industry to ensure that specifications are aligned with international standards in simple words we can say that ichq6 guideline provides you the list of test their specifications acceptance criteria and their justification based on the safety efficacy and quality requirements for example if you are working on to a drug substance or api or you are working on a drug product so this guideline will give you idea regarding the what quality parameters are required to be tested and what should be the acceptance criteria to meet safety efficacy and quality requirements let's start with the requirements for example test for the drug substances and the drug products certain tests are universal tests which are applicable to all the drug substances and the drug products you might have seen that all the apis all the excipients all the raw materials drug products have the description as a test so description means it is a physical appearance or state or color or it also gives information regarding how it looks so description is the appearance then identification identification appears of identification will give you the information regarding the identity so first is description second is identification identification may be by the infrared spectroscopy it with may be with uv or hplc so generally two techniques are required to be used for the identification generally you you might have seen the coa that is certificate of analysis which provides you the information for identification done with ir and hplc assay assay is the determination of the active ingredient or active content so assay is generally 98% to 102% for uh, drug substances it might be uh, with other Uh, specifications like 97% to 103% it might be 96% to 104% or it might be 95 to 105% based on the uh, specific api then water content so assay is the first that is potency determination second is the water content or loss on drive if the drug substance is uh, monohydrate or dihydrate or Uh, it is containing the absorbed water that time uh, water content test is performed another is loss on drying so loss on drying is also performed for some of the drug substances then coming to the impurities that is organic impurity or related substances sometime it is called as organic impurity or sometime it is called as related substances so impurities may be organic impurities inorganic impurities or chiral impurities these may be the residual solvents as per icsq 3c uh, there may be the uh, class 1 2 3 solvents or these also known as volatile impurities and also uh, nowadays nitrosamines are also being tested so nitrate uh, nitrite and nitrate uh, impurity testing is also performed and nitrosamine declaration is provided so uh, this is regarding the uh, universal test so these are the testing required to be done for all the drug substances and the drug products now coming to the information for specific test for the api and the drug substances you can also uh, relate this to the drug products as well so water content is there this is done by uh, carl fischer titration uh, there may be loss on drying testing sometimes uh, sulfated ash 
as is a, a, a test sulfided as testing is done residue on ignition then uh, particle size specification is the uh, important test for drug substances because this is a critical material attribute or you can say it is a functionality test then bulk density tap density for some of the uh, uh, drug substances this testing is done surface area is also uh, tested for some of the drug substances then xrd testing is done for the uh, uh, apis or it is also uh, done for some drug products for which polymorphism plays the plays the critical role and if it is applicable to the drug substance or drug product that time XRD testing is done for specific polymorphism identification and detection. Then microbial testing. Generally for non-sterile substances, microbial testing is done. So this is the information regarding specific test. Uh, not only these tests are the specific test, uh, other tests can also be uh, done based on the specific API, uh, drug substance or the drug product. Then coming to the drug product specific uh, tests. So generally description test is there, identification is there as per the universal test. Then coming to the contain uniformity. So it might be uh, done for the uh, uh, oral formulations and other formulations as well. Contain uniformity can be done by uniformity of doses unit testing and by the content uniformity by actually uh, testing the assay. So, uh, it might be done by weight variation testing and also by content uniformity evaluation. DT time or disintegration time is also done for some of the formulations like tablets and capsules. Then dissolution and drug release. So, dissolution testing is an in vitro test to uh, know the performance of the formulation in vivo. Hardness testing is done for tablets. Then pH of the solution, sometimes it is tested for some of the formulations like effervescent tablets. Sterility testing for sterile formulations, micro testing for non-sterile formulations, preservative content test or assay is done for some formulations in which preservatives are used. Then viscosity testing for liquid formulations or semi-solid formulations. Then container closure integrity is tested for some products which are sterile in nature. Sometimes density is also tested. So, these are some of the test for drug products. Now, uh, we are uh, going to check and learn regarding the release testing and the stability testing. So, uh, you might be known about this testing. At some uh, 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 release point, some tests are done, while some tests are not done at the stability testing. So, generally, uh, content uniformity is evaluated at the release testing and it is not done at uh, stability testing. So generally stability testing and release testing common practice is description, physical appearance, assay, impurity degradation or uh, impurity, uh, organic impurity evaluation or testing, then water content testing, dissolution and drug release. Also for some of the formulations, uh, XRD is uh, done. If the product uh, is required to check for the polymorphic conversion or retention that time XRD testing is uh, done. Now coming to the ICH Q6 charts. So these are the specification development flow charts and uh, the purpose of the, these flow charts uh, is to outline the steps in the development of specifications for drug substances and the drug products. So this guideline uh, gives you some uh, charts, flow charts. Uh, in these flowcharts, uh, you can understand uh, thoroughly how the specification is established and uh, how the ranges are finalized. So, decision tree one gives you establishing uh, acceptance criteria for a specified impurity in a new drug substance. So, many flowcharts are there, and I will make specific uh, and separate video on these flowcharts. So, for now, for this video, we are going to learn regarding these flowchart types. So type, uh, flowchart uh, number one is for establishing the specific acceptance criteria for a specified impurity in neutral substance. Then chart number two or uh, decision tree you can say 
it is for establishing acceptance criteria for degradation product in new drug product then decision 3 uh, decision tree 3 number is there which is for setting acceptance criteria for drug substance particle size distribution so this is psd uh, testing and acceptance criteria decision tree 4 it is for investigating the need to set acceptance criteria for polymorphism in drug substance and the drug product so this is very important uh, to understand here uh, investigating the need to set the acceptance criteria for polymorphism whether there is a need to test the polymorphism or not if the for if the drug substance or uh, the drug product uh, is not uh, uh, risky for polymorphism if the drug substance doesn't show polymorphism and if uh, the polymorphism is not changed by the manufacturing process of the uh, drug product that time it is not required decision tree 4 also gives you information regarding the uh, investigating the need to set acceptance criteria for polymorphism in drug substance and the drug products and when it is required to set the acceptance criteria decision tree 5 is for establishing identity assay and enantiomeric impurity procedures for chiral new drug substances and new drug products containing chiral drug substances so chiral drug substances and chiral impurities is the topic for decision tree 5 decision tree 6 is for microbiological quality attributes of drug substances and excipients decision tree 7 for setting acceptance criteria for drug product dissolution this is very very important to understand how to set the acceptance criteria for dissolution i have made many videos on this you can go through the playlist and have good idea about these topics for dissolution then decision tree 8 is for microbiological attributes of non-sterile drug products so this is the information regarding ichq6 and i request you to watch those videos uh, repeatedly whenever you want to have a good idea about these topics many uh, videos are available on this pharma learning in depth channel you can go through those videos and then uh, i assure you that you will have total understanding about these topics in uh, upcoming time i will be making separate videos on these decision trees and in those videos we will discuss uh, or we will learn the exact way exact uh, flow to set the acceptance criteria for different tests thank you for watching the video and i request you to uh, share these videos to your friends and colleagues to uh, have uh, better understanding so that they will have good idea about these topics and they will understand better you can also comment me regarding any specific question and i will be happy to answer your questions thank you